Uh, whilst Katrina was reading the news, quite an extraordinary thing happened on TVNZ, and that is they released their latest Colmar Brunton, one news Colmar Brunton poll. It's put Labour ahead of the Nats for the first time since Alan Clark was Prime Minister. Labour are now at 43%, uh, up six on the last Colmar Brunton, and up what? Somewhere approaching the uh, mid 20s. So sorry, somewhere approaching 20 points since they were languishing in the mid 20s under Andrew, under Andrew Little. So Labour are at 43%, up six, two points ahead of National, who are on 41. New Zealand first down to at eight, but 43 plus eight is 51. So Labour could theoretically, and who knows what Winston might do at the moment on this poll, and who knows what might change in the next three weeks. Get there with New Zealand first support alone. The Greens are also back at that five percent threshold. They are up one after their pretty heavy hit in the last Colmar Brunton. So Labor 46, National uh, sorry Labor 43, National 41, New Zealand first eight, and the Greens five. I think we have our political editor Jane Patterson on the phone. Are you there, Jane? Hello, John. Hello. Goodness gracious me! What do you make of this? Well, this election campaign just keeps getting better and better, doesn't it? This is an astonishing poll. The one news Colmar Brunton poll that has Labour ahead of National for the first time in 12 years. The last time was 2006 under Helen Clark. So they are at 43% and they are up six points since the last Colmar Brunton. National significantly is down as well. So the rise in Labour is at the expense of National and New Zealand first. So I think we're at a point where we're starting to see that crossover vote into the national support, which is the, the crucial element for Labour in terms of being able to put together a government and under this poll, poll they could do that without the Greens, but with New Zealand first. Yes, this is fascinating, isn't it? Jane, I can't remember what the Colmar Brunton before the last one had Labour at, but it was somewhere in the mid-20s, wasn't it? So they are up somewhere between 15 and 20 points over two Colmar Bruntons since Jacinda Ardern became leader, right? That's right. Well, remember back, um, it was August the 1st when Andrew Little stepped down and it was the week before that that Colmar Brunton had uh, Labour at about 23% and they were also polling similar points in their own UMR internal poll. So what a turnaround um, over the course of a month for Labour under Jacinda Ardern. And of course, it's been an interesting week. Um, Labour has announced a tertiary policy that they've really been selling hard to tertiary institutions, but also Jacinda Ardern really keeping out of the fray when it came to the Winston Peters superannuation story and then the accusations against national ministers in terms of the leak, really um, not, not getting into that at all, pretty much leaving it to national and New Zealand first to scrap it out. Of course, Jane, new leaders get a honeymoon period, don't they, because there is attendant publicity and they're able to get the spotlight and talk directly to the country via the media. In some cases, John Key springs to mind, Helen Clark springs to mind, the, uh, the honeymoon period lasts a very long time. With Jacinda Ardern, her elevation to leader was so close to the election that there are so many things going right for her, aren't there? That's right, and it's actually been an advantage that the public hasn't had a chance to get sick of her, if, if I can put it like that, that she hasn't been um, on the media for months and months and months, and that could have been a disadvantage and could still be a disadvantage, although the polls under her leadership are going in the right direction. In terms of um, the, the time to make errors as well and the time to be exposed for your weaknesses. Now, of course, um, I'm at TVNZ at the moment. We're just about to go into the first leaders debate um, with Jacinda Ardern going up against Bill English. And this is going to be a real test of Jacinda Ardern under pressure, um, getting questions and having to go directly against Bill English, who is a very seasoned operator. So, yes, this honeymoon has worked um, for her well, um, but we still have some weeks to go and, and these debates in particular are going to be the first real test or one of the, the real tests of her under pressure. It's going to be absolutely fascinating tonight. How do the Nats respond? And I guess I'm asking you to read the tea leaves here. We've got in a bid for Stephen Joyce, who is, of course, their campaign strategy manager, to, to, to join us in the next 20 minutes before the end of Checkpoint tonight, and we're hoping he'll be available to do that. But what do they do now, do you think, Jane? They will not attack Jacinda Ardern personally, and that's been a strategy they've had from the start. I think it became very clear to them that um, attacking her was not going to wash well at all. So they've been focusing on their own game. I think what they will try to attack Labour on is tax. 
So Labor, of course, um, keeping open the option of a capital gains tax. They've announced a tourist tax, a water tax. I think that is an area of vulnerability National will really try to look to exploit. And they will also, um, underneath that, try to point out the the untested na- nature of Jacinda Ardern, who is going to is running for prime minister in four weeks. They're going to start talking up the stable government with the government that that um, New Zealand knows and that's brought them through some tough times. Shane Patterson, our political editor, joining us live at very short notice because these figures only came on uh, TVNZ at six o'clock. Grant Robertson is uh, joining us now. Grant, are you there? Hello. Yeah, hello. You there? I am. Yes. It's, yeah. Go, go look. What do you? When did you hear about these Colmar Br- Brunton figures? Uh, just before six. Um, so, no, not not much before the rest of the country. Now, you, obviously, there was real momentum after Jacinda became leader, and the first Colmar Brunton was a massive rise. Did you expect that momentum to continue to have Labor at forty three up six on the Colmar Brunton before and National at forty one down three? Oh look, you know it's it's clear to anybody I think who's out campaigning that that you know Jacinda and, and the party are really connecting with people um, in a way that we we haven't for some time. But I never have any particular expectations about poll numbers, John. Um, we just want to keep working hard and keep making sure that you know the kinds of ideas that we're talking about are getting out there and the the vision that Jacinda has for a, you know a, a positive and better New Zealand gets out there. So we keep doing that. Hopefully, people keep responding. But what's the difference? Let's look. So Helen Clark was a leader that connected with people and also she was admired on a level that didn't speak of personal connection but which was about something intellectually formidable that, that, that people looked up to in her. But then since then, well, we had Phil Goff, David Shearer, uh, Andrew Little, David Cunliffe. Why is Jacinda Ardern making the difference, do you think? Well, I mean, look, I mean, it's hard to say it, but I, I think at one level it's that there's, a, there's an absolute genuineness and sincerity in, in Jacinda that you can't mistake. And I'm not saying those others didn't have it. It's just that hers shines through. I'll tell you the word that I hear the most often when, when, when people talk to me about, about Jacinda, and that's empathy. Um, she's, she's one of those people that people you know feel relates to them, feels, understands them. And you know that, that is because that genuinely is, is the person that she is. But I also don't want to underestimate um, her, her intellect either, John. I mean, I've worked with her for you know, for about more than a decade now, in one way or another, and and she's one of the smartest people I know. Um, she's been the architect of some big policies for us around children, around youth employment. Um, you know, she she combines a lot of the attributes together, and and you know, we've got good policies, we've got a great team to back her up, and and, and that seems to be what's getting through now. Grant Robertson, obviously delighted with those figures for the Labour Party. Thank you so much for joining us live. We're also uh, calling in the services of our wonderful colleague at TVNZ, Corin Dan, who is the political editor uh, there. Are you there, Corin? Kia ora. Kia ora. Lovely to have you on, on, on RNZ. We don't think the signal's any kind of merger, but it's, it's great to have you. Let's talk about the Colmar Brunton figures. Uh, you sure. must, have, uh, must have sat up straight when they came in. I did. Yep, no question of that. And it's one of those ones where you, you you know something, and the rest of the country is no doubt dying to find out. And it's hard to hard to contain yourself when you get a poll which is historic, and that's what this is because uh, it is it has been 12 years in, in our poll. And I know obviously some other polls uh, you know will be different, but up to 12 years since we've seen Labor as the lead party, and that's the significant element here, um, given all the connotations around coalitions and who gets to choose. Uh, who gets to try and form a government first and all those sorts of things. So it is significant, and um, yeah, it is, it, 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 I guess it backs up the argument that there is some sort of a, a mood swing on here in New Zealand. Um, but, you know, there's, uh, the other thing I would say is that there will have to be other polls, but what we, what we clearly seem to be having is, is a real classic two-horse race back to sort of that yes. 2005 era. Yeah, it's fascinating. You, 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 gosh, you mentioned the uh, the first choice. So New Zealand First, Winston Peters has said very explicitly he will talk first of all to the party that gets the most party votes, right? He has, absolutely. Okay. He absolutely has said that. And that, and that is significant. And what was significant about this poll um, is that Labor could just make it on these numbers, and bear in mind things could change, um, they could just make it uh, with New Zealand First alone. 43 uh, plus so 8. Much cleaner... A, a scenario than uh, and something, of course, because Winston was always going to be, or New Zealand First was always going to be wary about having the Greens involved there. Now, the Greens are back under this poll, but um, it does give Labor that ability to say, 
we could potentially form a coalition government with New Zealand first, and there's no other bodies needed, if you like. Uh, Corin, this comma, uh, Brunton One News poll is absolutely fascinating. Well, one of the things that's fascinating about it is if you, because people are saying this is Jacinda mania and that is the term du jour and, and all that kind of stuff, but if you look at the preferred Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern's at 34, Bill English is at 33, so in fact they're yeah, neck and like neck. Yeah. yeah people, so it's, people like Bill. They do, don't they? they yeah, they, they do. They, they, yeah, they do. It's a question of they trust him, they like him. Um, they're not, it's not like they're suddenly falling out of favour with Bill English, um, but his numbers have gone up as well. But you just get the sense. Uh, anecdotally everywhere that people are so much more interested in politics and have been energised by Jacinda Ardern. What we're seeing now is it translating into uh, support in the polls. Now, the turnout will still be important for Labour because we know their turnout uh, isn't always as good on the left. Uh, they will need to mobilise, and uh, particularly younger voters, uh, to ensure that people do vote. And, and older people tend to vote a bit more, and they tend to be uh, more conservative. So that is something they will need to consider. Um, but I do, you know, it clearly is, it clearly is a, a sign that uh, what people were anecdotally saying out there is bearing out. Uh, and the question is what National now does to respond. And I think this debate tonight uh, in about yes. 40 minutes' time is critical because Bill English has got to find two things. He's got to find a way to get a chink in the armour. He's got to find a way to get through and not just send her doing off her stride so that she... She looks, she, he's got to expose her, you know, because at the moment she's literally not put a foot wrong. If he can find a chink in the armour and people might have a second thought, then that would be a huge win for him and he needs to do that. But I think he also needs to show some personality, some a side that we perhaps, I think that sometimes um, those who work in the press gallery have seen from time to time about he, he is, when he goes off script and he answers questions at some conference or something, he can crack jokes and he can be an entertaining guy. And so that he steps out of that image of the of the serious um, doer, uh, finance minister type person. And he's got to bring a little bit of that, a bit of passion and a bit of fire to counter Jacinda Ardern. So it really is setting it up to, uh, nicely tonight. Yeah, it's going to be a fascinating debate. Corin Dan, political editor for One News. Thank you so much for joining us, Corin. It's a fascinating poll and we uh, appreciate your take on it. Let's go for a big picture look at this with uh, the University of Auckland political scientist Raymond Miller, with whom I've done many election nights and discussed many campaigns. Raymond, are you there? Yes, how are you, John? Yeah, good. It's lovely to talk to you again. You yeah. must have been sitting there thinking, holy moly, when these figures, when you got these figures. I saw you in the story. So you've, you've known them and been keeping them a secret for a couple of hours. Yes, yes, I've been, I haven't even shared them with the dog. Right. That's good. That's that. I think we can all trust you. If you're keeping stuff from the dog, that <laughs> makes you a very safe pair of hands. I was just talking about this with Corin Dan because everyone's talking about Jacinda Mania and I, I want to look at those preferred Prime Minister figures because Jacinda Ardern is 34 and Bill English is 33, so they're the same. So something else is happening to Labour that's not just about Jacinda Ardern, right? If they've been up the best part of 20 points over two polls. Yes, uh, I mean, she's had a, an almost faultless performance since uh, the beginning of August when she took over the leadership. So, I mean, I do think that uh, personality and uh, presentational skills have been uh, very important in the rise of Labour. But it's amazing how initial success builds a certain, certain momentum. We've seen it with other political parties elsewhere. But, you know, once the momentum begins, it can turn into a tidal wave in absolutely no time at all. And that's what we're seeing. I mean, she's come up uh, both as preferred prime minister, but also in terms of party support. Uh, dramatically in the last four weeks. Yes, she has. And you look back over a long career as a political scientist and you see formidable incumbents. And I'm thinking particularly of Muldoon when Longy came just smack into him and Clark when Key came just smack into her. Suddenly people who have looked impervious to any kind of opposition begin to look vulnerable, don't they? That's true. And, and I think what happened in both those examples you give um, uh, is that, you know, people to begin to tire of a government after it's been in power for, my goodness, it's, it's uh, nearly 50 years since we had a four-term government. Yeah. And that's a way back in the Holyoke years. And uh, we, we get to three terms, but it's very difficult to get to four. And I think it's partly because, you know, no matter how many tricks a, a government can play, the tide begins to turn against it after time. It begins to fray around the edges, begins to lose support. 
um, and before you know what's happening inside of power. So I think there's a lesson in that for, for any government. So what do the Nats do? Well, I think they, they're, they're still at 41 percent, so I mean... <laughs> you're right, you're right. It's not you're right. too bad. It's not the Titanic, is yeah. it, at 41? No. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's, it's not too bad, but I mean, it, the onus is now on Bill English, I think, to, to really perform well in these debates, because there's not much between now and the election itself. No. The debates are going to be very important, and the way the polls are tracking over the next two or three weeks, I think, will will be, be very important as well. But I think it really is on Bill English's fo sh shoulders now to, to really show that he has a commanding knowledge of the economy and understands trends in public opinion and what people really want. It will be really interesting to see what National's front bench does too. There will be some cabinet ministers who are going to define their character over the next couple of weeks because if they disappear without trace they are raising the white flag and and you know we need to start seeing people beside them on the campaign trail not just the kind of people who stand in the back of shot nodding like those dogs on the, on, on, on the back row of the car but actually senior cabinet ministers out campaigning beside him backing him and reminding us of the totality of what national claims it can bring right yes absolutely I mean we need to see more of people like uh, Judith Collins. Judith Collins has, there's been more sightings of Lord Lucan in the past well, week or two, hasn't there? Exactly. And, jo and Jonathan Coleman has been typically elusive over the last few, few weeks and he needs to come forth, particularly on his portfolio areas. Um, so, yes, I agree with you. Senior ministers have got to start carrying some of the load as well. And their experience is such that they can turn the tide providing that they uh, are, are all in this together. Um, but, you know, it seems a very difficult, the, the way the, the momentum of the campaign is beginning to turn, um, it seems that uh, it's going to be very hard to turn the public against Jacinda Ardern, even without a vast experience, particularly around areas of finance and so on. Yeah. She just has that, uh, that ability, that charisma that, um, you know, and politicians like she and David Longy and others in, in great stead. Roman, it's really good to talk to you again. One question before you go. And it, I remember talking to Labour people who, when John Key started to gain momentum and when John Key started to do precisely what Jacinda Ardern is doing now, which is make people smile in shopping malls, they were saying, what the hell do we do? Yep. And, and how do you counter that kind of connection when it is fresh and potent? Well, that's absolutely right. And it's, it, it's at such an emotional level, it's very, very difficult to know what to do once that happens. And we see it so rarely in politics. We certainly saw it in John Key. Uh, we saw it in David Longy. But very, every, it takes, a, it takes a, a, mm -hmm. a lot of change, actually, to take place in politics for someone like that to emerge. Yeah, it does. Stop. And, you know, when you think back to where Labour was exactly a month ago, my goodness. My goodness. Gosh. My goodness. Even the dog, Raymond, is sitting up and taking notice now. <laughs> Ra 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 Dr. Raymond Miller, lovely to talk to you again. Thank you for your expertise at very short notice because we've only had these figures at six, uh, since 6 o'clock tonight. Do Dr. Raymond Miller, of course, is uh, a, a very senior political scientist at the University of Auckland.